Greetings from Wisconsin, you're on. Hey, it's good. Got um, snow already, huh? Say it again. Got snow already? Not much. It's actually pretty warm here right now for the season. Uh, I do want to take an opportunity to, you know, encourage listeners and, and everybody to, in addition to supporting uh, yourself, to support the Ayn Rand Institute. And one simple and fun way that I found to do that is uh, through Amazon Smile. So every time you make a purchase, yep. Amazon will kick a few percentage points over towards the uh, towards the Institute. So I, I do that. I just got my report from Amazon on how many dollars, you know, the, the Ayn Rand Institute has received from the Amazon Smile program. And it's 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 a non, the non-trivial amount. Yep. Um, so yeah, moving on. Um, I want to talk about, uh, you know, I guess music versus lyrics, right? So you get a lot of questions about um, musicians and songs. Yeah. I know, I know you said you're a fan of Pink Floyd. Um, yeah. And I guess when, when, you're, when you're having those discussions, are you separating the music from the lyrics? Are you, are you considering both? Um, does, does the music take away from the message? Does it add to the message? Um, how, are you, how are you analyzing that? So the ideal, right, the ideal song, the ideal, any kind of vocal musical piece, the lyrics and the music would be completely integrated. They would reinforce one another. If, 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 they, if the words are evoking an emotion, the music should evoke a similar emotion, right? And that's great music. When you can do both of that, when you can have the words and the music integrated, no matter what the theme, but integrated, then that is, I think, a, an ideal situation. Um, and that happens. I, I think Pink Floyd does. I mean, the music is pretty, usually pretty depressing and dark, and the lyrics are pretty depressing and dark, right? Um, and it's integrated, and, and it's in that sense, it's good, right? It's good aesthetically because it's integrated. Right, it might not have the right sense of life. It might be presenting values that you don't like, but it, you have to evaluate it aesthetically, not based on our values, but based on the characteristics of the aesthetic characteristics of the music and the lyrics and the integration between the two. Right. Um, I find I respond much more to music than to lyrics. Right. So, so I, for example, I listen to a lot of opera. I like knowing what the lyrics are, but I can listen to opera without knowing what the hell she's talking about, right? And, and I can get, because the music is so emotion evoking, I hope that the lyrics are consistent with that <laughs> when she's singing, because the, 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 the emotions are so strong. Um, I listen to, a lot, I, li I really like Bossa Nova, which is a, uh, a Brazilian form of, of jazz. And uh, so the singing is in Portuguese. I have no idea what they're saying, right? But I find that the music and the emotion that you can express with a voice, when that, that's another level of integration, right? It's how you use your voice, the lyrics, the music, all of that. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very attracted to that. But on the other hand, when I listen to songs from my teen years, particularly in Hebrew, the fact that I understand the words is a value. So. I, you know, I think it's, I think it's, um, I think you can enjoy different things in different songs. And again, the ideal is when everything is integrated. I, you know, I just, I just heard, um, I just heard the singer, Una Sachs, Una Sachs, right? She's a singer, 20s, 30s, 40s, right? Long time ago, 100 years, almost 100 years ago. And she had the most stunning voice I've ever heard. She could do stuff at the top range that I've never heard any singer, opera, non-opera do, right? And it was just enjoyable just listening to her voice. The music was fun. Didn't understand a word she said. She sang in German. But the stuff she was doing with her voice was stunning, just stunning. So I can enjoy different things in different compositions. Um, you know, I don't particularly like Bob Dylan's voice, but... I think his voice matches his lyrics and his music quite well. I wouldn't want Bob Dylan singing Bossa Nova. <laughs> if you know Bossa Nova, it's a smooth jazz, right? But for his gritty poetry and the kind of music that comes with it, I think his voice is perfectly integrated. 
and it's a blend. So I don't know if I'm answering your question. I'm rambling on about my views on, uh, on, on this stuff. Yeah, I think you're answering the question pretty well. I thought for me, I wanted it cleared up a little bit. It did seem to me like you kind of focus more on the, on the music than the lyrics. And, I, you know, I figure a lot of the questions you get, yep. you know, the, the, the questioner isn't concerned about the music. They're, t they're, they're impressed with the lyrics of Rush more so than the music, perhaps. Maybe. I don't know. And, and again, I've, I've never really responded to Rush, so I, I, I won't comment. But, um, but I also, look, you know, take Pink Floyd, for those of you who know Pink Floyd. Um, take Wish You Were Here, right? I mean, the, 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 or Shine On Crazy Diamond, either one of those, that album. The words can be interpreted in a way that I understand, right? I Wish You Were Here. The music is very wishy, right? It, it's like, what's the term I'm looking for? But it expresses that I miss you, right? It, it really does express that longing. That's the word, longing, right? That wish you were here is reflecting. And it's got the sad, longing, wistful kind of thing to it. And so, and I think the music and the lyrics are well integrated. The it, and, and this is the thing, the lyrics... Um, I don't respond to literature generally, to written word generally, because it's right. I don't respond to literature because it's right, right? I respond to it because it's beautiful, because it's well communicated, because it projects some intense value. It doesn't even have to be my value. So take, for example, Hugo, Victor Hugo. You read Victor Hugo and like the Miserables has a whole thing about socialism and about the plight of the poor. And, and uh, 93, which is my favorite, they're struggling over things that I don't really care that much about. I mean, both, both the heroes are my villains, right? They're both wrong. <laughs> but abstract away from that, and it is the heroism, it is the valuing, not the particular values that I respond to. So... I worry about objectivist art, so-called objectivist art. There is no such thing as objectivist art. Art that is so focused on getting the lyrics to be consistent with objectivism that everything else is forgotten. But A, the lyrics have to be good. That doesn't mean objectivist, it just means good. Then if, you, then if you're an objectivist and you want them to be consistent with your values, then they need to project those values. And then you have to write great music on top of that. All of that is super, super difficult, right? And, um, and I respond, different people respond to different things. I respond to the music because the music is more direct. I, I, there's, no, there's no literature. There's a thought process involved. You're, you're thinking about things. Music is just respond to. And I, I find that very easy and in, in a sense appealing because I don't have to, okay, is this, does this make sense? Is this true? Is, I just think, is this beautiful, isn't it? That's, that's it, right? There's no cognition involved, which is nice for art is supposed to appeal to your emotion and music goes directly to your emotion. And the lyrics in a sense get in the way because now I'm thinking, well, does he really, does Bob Dylan really mean that? What, what does he mean by that? What, what is going to, and then I've lost the song because I'm trying to analyze his lyrics. Now, when you kind of understand, again, Bob Dylan, his lyrics are not objectivist, right? But his lyrics make sense in the context of the music. And they, they again, reflect certain emotions that I think are universal. That's what makes him successful. The fact that the emotions are universal emotions, even if the specifics of the lyrics are not something I like. Right? How does it feel to be on your own? I mean, when I was a teenager and an objectivist teenager, to be like a Rolling Stone, I mean, that hit, that got me, right? Even though you would say from an objective perspective, oh, you know, that's so depressing, it's so down. Yeah, but I was down and depressed. I was alone as a teenager, you know, hard, hard, hard getting girls and nobody agreed with me. And I felt like I was the only human being on the planet. And Bob Dylan with that song got to me, right? In a way that other forms of art don't because it's so visceral. Music is so visible. Anyway. Okay. Th thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the, the attention here. Sure. My pleasure, Matthew. What we need today 
what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.